Praise the Lord. Wow. Look at the person next to you and just tell them, you look better than I thought you would. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Yeah. I know you're like me. You just like to start with good compliments. It feels good. You know, this is an incredible time, and I just sense the power of Holy Spirit moving in such a, a wonderful way today. This is a, a God moment, and I'm so glad that you're here. And so right now, I release the power of Holy Spirit to move in your life right now in Jesus' name, and I declare fertile soil over you. As a matter of fact, just take a moment, lift your hands with me. Everybody, lift your hands, pray this prayer. Holy Spirit, open my ears that I can hear what you have to say. Open my heart, make it receptive. I give you permission to move deep in my life, to form my heart, to form my character. Jesus, have your way in me today. Amen, amen. We're gonna look at uh, the power of the seed part two. And uh, let's just dig right in so that uh, we can actually go over it all. Genesis chapter 1 verse 9, Then God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place, and let dry land appear. And it was so, and God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together the waters he called seas. And God said that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit, according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields, yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the third day. Then jump back over to Genesis 8, and remember uh, verse 22, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. Seed time and harvest shall not cease. To just uh, review a couple points that we covered last week. We understand that the power of multiplication is found in the seed that you plant. The power of multiplication is found in the seed that you plant. And you understand also that covenant is the key. When you're in covenant, there is supernatural power to release the potential of the seed. Not outside of covenant, in covenant. And then we also understand that unlocking the supernatural is actually stewarding the seeds of grace. God gives us these seeds of grace. These seeds have exponential power, capacity to reproduce themselves, sustain themselves. And it is, uh, it is our stewardship, our stewardship that uh, is so key and so important. So God gives us to us as stewards the power to plant. So the pouring out and the planting of seeds is how the supernatural is deposited. These seeds, once they're distributed, they germinate, they blossom, and they become full-fledged miracles. There are many types of seeds. The miracle that God worked in you is a seed that he planted in you by his grace. That seed can be multiplied. The seed that God planted in you, he planted there, he deposited grace inside of you. He worked a miracle in you and that miracle can be duplicated, replicated, propagated into the future. Now I wanna ask you, how many of you have, have experienced salvation? You've been saved. Jesus took your sins away. He separated your sins as far as the east is from the west. Let me see how many of you have been delivered from an addiction this morning. 
Alcohol no longer has a hold on you. Cocaine, crack, marijuana, heroin, LSD, opiates, prescription drugs no longer have a hold on you. How many of you have experienced healing? Healing, God has set you free from sickness, from disease. He healed your body. You experience the power of his wounds coming alive in you and resurrection coming to dead cells. God touched your body, healed you, set you free from sickness. How many of you have experienced a miracle in your family? A marriage that was headed for divorce, a a child that had gone astray. You you are going through devastation, grief, and sorrow, and, and somehow the power of Jesus came in and healed broken relationships, wounded emotions. He brought about you a reconciliation in covenant relationships. How many of you have experienced a miracle of provision? You met Jehovah Jireh there on the mountain and God came through when you needed it the most. He blessed your finances. He gave you promotion at the right time. He gave you favor. He gave you the anointing, the skill, the idea to start a new business. You became an entrepreneur. You went from employee to employer. Why? Because God showed himself. He worked a miracle. He planted a seed. That seed was, was deep inside of you and then the Holy Spirit called that seed forth and you've experienced a miracle. And the miracle that you've experienced is the miracle that you can give away. That's the miracle that you can reproduce. And so each of these seeds that God deposited in us is not just for us. But they are to be multiplied, deposited into others that we come in contact with, others that we're in relationship with, others that we encounter that are desperate. They're just as desperate as we were and they need what we've got. Now, I want you to understand that you are divine seed. Yeah. When you get up in the morning and you look in the mirror, you need to realize you are looking at divine seed staring back at you in that mirror. You are divine seed. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God as he is, had been speaking, he said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them and then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Wow. God said, let us make man in our own image. And then when he spoke and, and when, he, when he actually did, he picked up the dirt, he made man in his image. He took from, from Adam's side a rib and he formed the woman in his image. He created them male and female in his image according to its kind. Now, listen, this is incredible. The word image literally means resemblance and it, and it speaks to a representative figure, a representative figure. There is a common DNA structure in families. If you look at me today, you can very easily see a resemblance of my father at this same age in his life. And if I look at you, I can probably see some of your grandpas and grandmas 
looking back at me. If we could go through the family history and take out the albums and take out the scrapbooks and look at, at all the before Photoshop. Listen, you were made in the image of God. You came from divine seed. Therefore, you bear the image of God. You look like your daddy. You walk like your daddy. You talk like your daddy. You think like your daddy. You carry divine seed. You are a representative figure of God to this world. Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed and the fruit that yields seed according to its kind whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so, and the, and the earth brought forth grass and the herb that yields seed according to its kind and the tree that yields fruit whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Psalm verse 8, you, you've got to see this, Psalm 8, Psalm 8, beginning with verse 1. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. Don't you understand God wants to shut the devil up that has been lying to you and telling you that you're nothing, that you're nobody, that God made a mistake when he made you. Somehow something got messed up and everybody else might be fine, but you're not who you're supposed to be because God messed up. God is silencing the enemy. He is silent. I take authority over the lies of hell that come against your identity in the name of Jesus. Listen to the word of God. The psalmist said, this is, this is David. David said, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man? that you are mindful of him, the son of man, that you should visit him. For you have made him a little lower than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him a little lower than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hand. You put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in the earth. When you look at verse 5, in verse 5 he said, You have made him a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor. The word crowned in the Hebrew means to encircle. Encircling. And there's two pictures that are being drawn. One's kind of like the old westerns where the, the Indians have come in, in on their horses and they've, they've got the wagons in a circle and the, and the enemy has encircled those wagons of the pioneers and they're ready to raid the settlers as they're going across the plains. The other is an encircling for protection. God has encircled you. God has encircled you to protect you. He has crowned you. He has protected you. He has encompassed you. You understand that God protects his children. While he's encircling us to protect us, he's encircling the devil to destroy and defeat his work in our life. It's happening simultaneously. God encircles us with his presence. He causes us to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. He, sh he hides us in the shadow of his wings. He places us protectively in the cleft of the rock. He is the fire by night and the cloud by day that gives us warmth, that gives us protection. He creates a separation between us and the enemy so that that no weapon that's ever formed against us is able to prosper because he is our shield. He is our buckler. He is our high tower. He is our source of strength. He is the one that we run to in a time of need. That's our God. That's our God. Look at Genesis chapter one, verse 26. 
God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them, and then he blessed them. He blessed them, and he said, be fruitful and multiply. You understand that children are a blessing. They're not an inconvenience. They're inconvenient when you're out of covenant. We won't go there too much further. Let that ruminate and marinate. God blessed them and he said, be fruitful and multiply. The first blessing is fruitfulness. Be fruitful and multiply. Then he said, fill the earth. That's a command. You multiply for the purpose of filling in the earth. And then he said, subdue it. As you grow, as you expand, as you move your tent stakes out, as you mature, as you become more like Jesus, as you gain power in the Holy Ghost and you walk in the power of his presence, more and more territory becomes subdued around you. And then he said, have dominion. God created you for dominion. Look at the person next to you, look them in the eye and say, God created you for dominion. He created you to rule. And he said, rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every living thing that moves on the earth. I like that part where he calls out the creeps. Over every creeping thing. You are made to rule over the creeps. It's in the word. Don't hate the messenger. I'm just delivering the message. Genesis 1, 26, he said, let us make man in our likeness. The word likeness also means resemblance, and it means a model. You are a model of God. When the world looks at you, they see a model. I used to enjoy model cars when I was a kid, and actually I did a wedding for someone, and then the, they gave me a beautiful gift, intricately detailed and put together the model of a 1950s Chevy. It was incredible. It's in a little shadow box. That mo- when I look at that car, I see the uh, image of the real thing. When the world looks at you, they should be able to see the God in you. You are made a model. It speaks to shape. It speaks to similitude. You should be similar to your daddy. You should should look like your daddy. Now, you've got to get this because you've got to understand what's in the seed. What is in the seed? Identity is contained in the seed. The seed is where the identity is contained and when that seed germinates, the identity is released and it's brought to fruition. Genesis chapter one, verse number 11. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, herb that yields seed and fruit trees that yields fruit according to its kind. Did you get that? Oranges don't grow on apple trees. Apples don't grow on orange trees. You can't get strawberries out of the ground where peanuts have been planted. The, God made this earth to reproduce according to its kind. The seed brings forth fruit according to its kind. So I want to be very clear this morning and I want you to understand from the word of God that identity confusion is an attack from hell on the image of God that has been placed inside of you. The seed contains the identity of the plant, the identity of the animal, the identity of the person. God established in the seed the DNA structure of the organism. That's why apple trees bear apples and orange trees bear oranges. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, 
then God said, or I'm sorry, Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Did you see that? Man and woman come together and reproduce children. They bear fruit, and that fruit contains seed to reproduce the image of the original, the image of God. Man and woman become one flesh and reproduce seed. You see, inside of you, is a deposit of the glory and the honor of God. In Psalm 8, verse 5, for you have made him a little lower than the angels, you have crowned him with glory and honor. Understand that you cannot walk in dominion if you're living in confusion. When you're in confusion, you're being ruled over. You're being dominated by the lie from hell. But when you step into your identity, you have the power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and, and over every deadly thing. When you step into your identity, you have the power and the authority of your daddy. When you step into your identity, you step into your position and you step into your purpose and you step into your passion. But when you're in confusion, the enemy robs you of all of your identity, of all of your purpose, of all of your passion, of all of your power because you're living in confusion. In verse 26, God in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, God specifically said, let them have dominion. Let them have dominion. The word dominion means to tread down. So when you step into your identity, you step in your ability to walk on the devil. The mountain becomes a foothill. The obstacle is just laid level in front of you because you're in your identity. You have dominion over that. It means to subjugate. When you step into your identity as a child of God, Satan is subjugated to the rule of Jesus in you. The word dominion also means to crumble off. All of the lies crumble off. They fall off when you step into the truth of the word. They crumble and they fall to the ground. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ in you is greater than the lie that Satan has tried to use to destroy you with. And I take authority over the walls of lies that have been built around your life. And I declare in the name of Jesus that the wall comes down today. They crumble. The word dominion means to prevail against. It means to rule, to make a ruler or to rule over. And, and you've got to understand that why is this important? Because Satan is trying to destroy the seed. He's doing everything he can to destroy the seed. Man made in the image of God. Why is it so important that we not just have revival, but we have reformation? Because when I was a child, Roe versus Wade became law. When I was a little boy, prayer was taken out of public schools. I had prayer in my first grade when my teacher would read the Bible every day and she would pray over that class every day. But in the second grade, it was gone. In the third grade, it was gone. All the way through my educational experience, it had been robbed from me. You've got to understand why it's important. Because when Roe versus Wade was turned over, it's a, an avenue for righteous seed to be promulgated on this earth because children are in the image of God. They have a little taste of God in them. They've been endowed with honor from God. They've been endowed with glory from God. And life is precious So Satan wants to destroy the seed. You know, isn't it amazing? How many of you go to the grocery store? You go to Sam's or Costco or 
Publix or Harris Teeter, wherever you go, and you say, hmm, give me the watermelon with the most seeds in it. Now, when I was a boy, my dad liked to plant a garden. And I remember him planting like an acre of watermelons. My Lord have mercy. We couldn't eat all that watermelon. He'd plant an acre of corn. And when he would plant corn, he'd put these little beans in there with them, little striped half runners. I hated those things, man. I love green beans today, but boy, I hated picking them. I, I hated breaking them, stringing them. Oh, it's torture for a kid. I had important things to do. I had to go out there and weed the garden and pick the beans. But I remember breaking open watermelon when I was a kid, and man, that thing was full of seeds. I mean, you had to take a bite and spit the seeds. Take a bite, spit the seeds. Take a bite, spit the seeds. Or get your fork out and just dig them all out. By the time you dig them out, it looks mutilated. Do you eat watermelon now with seeds in it? You go to the store, buy watermelon with seeds in it? Do you, do you see the inherent danger in this? Because what you're eating can't reproduce itself. The seed that's in seedless, there are seeds in seedless watermelon. There, there are not many, but there are a few. But the ones that are there are immature. The fruit matures and the seed doesn't. When you don't, when, I don't, how can I say this and not be offensive? When you don't let the fruit of the Holy Ghost mature in you because you got offended that somebody called you on the carpet or somebody said something about you or you misread, you think somebody said something about you, you really don't know what's going on in their head. They were just having a bad day, but you think they said something about you. And you don't allow that seed to mature, you can't reproduce. So to produce fruit that doesn't have mature seeds, you have to go through a crazy process. That you have to, it has to be engrafted. There are different methods, but one method is you engraft a part of that seedless fruit plant into another plant so that it can have more because you can't take the seed out of the fruit and plant it in the ground. I'm telling you, it's dangerous. And, and here's, a, here's a warning to the world that's being engulfed in this whole idea of seedlessness. You can't reproduce. What are you going to plant when the government says you can't have it? We're not going to give it to you. Control the food, control the people. Because the seed ensures generational reproduction and multiplication. This is the way God designed the plants. It's the way he designed the animals. It's the way he designed mankind. And any scientist or any politician who propagates the idiocy that a man can bear a child is a liar or is mentally unstable. It is in the covenant of marriage when a man and woman become one that the ability to reproduce is achieved. Man cannot have children with men Women cannot have children with women. It takes a man and a woman, the seed of the man in the egg of the woman, to reproduce the image of God. Yeah. 
You can look it up. There's a lot of research that has... <laughs> okay. All right. Um, why? We're, we're living in a, in a crazy world where everything's like out of kilter. And the research has actually found that attempted suicide rates and suicide ideation or suicidal thoughts among lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender youth is significantly higher than among the general population. And there have been numerous studies that have shown that lesbian, gay, bisexual youth have a higher rate of suicide attempts than heterosexual youth. One survey has shown that 18% of LGBT youth have attempted suicide, and that rate, some would consider low, but that rate is two times higher than the teenaged general population. You see, Satan's trying to destroy your seed. Now, what are we going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? You know that in the parable of the sower in Luke chapter 8, that the seed that was planted along the path, among the thorns, on the rocky places, and in good soil, the seed was all the same. It was the soil that made the difference. But he points out that the seed is the word of God. Luke chapter 8 verse 11. The seed is the word of God. So you have to use the word of God. You have to plant the seeds of the word to overcome the seeds of the lies that this society, that the media, that social media, that the government, that government agencies are trying to propagate, that universities are trying to propagate, that they're trying to teach your kindergartners. You have to implant the word of God in their heart so that they will not be consumed by the weeds and the lies. So, I make an apostolic decree that Holy Spirit is cleaning up the confusion that has clouded the minds of our children to make, the, to make them think that they were given the wrong identity at birth. Our children were made in the image of God God established them male and female, not he, she, they, them. And Satan cannot rob from us or from our children or from our grandparents the power of generational seed, our generational blessing, our generational wealth, and our generational glory and honor. So, the next screen that's going to come up here is going to have seven scripture references on it. Write them down. Get your camera out. You're good at selfies. Some of you, I see 50 selfies on, selfies on Facebook every day. You like it. It's good. Take a picture of that. Every one of those scriptures you begin to declare every day over your seed. Jeremiah 31, 16, the Lord says, well, I like it when God speaks. The Lord says, refrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears. Quit being bound by a spirit of depression. For your work shall be rewarded, says the Lord, and they shall come back from the land of the enemy. I declare it in Jesus' name. There is hope in your future, says the Lord, that your children shall come back to their own borders. 
Declare over your children, Isaiah 54, 13. All your children shall be taught by the Lord and great shall be the peace of your children. Proverbs chapter 11, verse number 21. But the posterity of the righteous will be delivered. Psalm 112, verse 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants, his seed will be mighty on the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 25, but thus says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible be delivered. For I will contend with him who contends with you and I will save your children. Isaiah chapter 44, verse number three. I will pour water on him who is thirsty and floods on the dry ground and I will pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessings on your offering, offspring. Isaiah chapter 59, verse number 21. As for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them. My spirit who is upon you and my words which I put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth nor from the mouth of your descendants nor from the mouth of your descendants' descendants says the Lord from this time forevermore. It is time to declare the word of God. Stop swallowing the lies of hell and counteract the lie with the word. My children are blessed. My children are saved. My children are delivered. The devil can't steal my children. Addiction can't have my kids. Identity confusion can't have my children. Homosexuality cannot have my children. Fornication, adultery, any form of sexual immorality cannot have my children. My descendants are blessed. My descendants are righteous. My descendants serve the Lord. I declare today and I draw a line in the spirit that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Begin to declare that over your children right now. Declare that over your family. If you've been struggling, if your marriage has gone through problems, if your children have been battling, then it's time right now. Take a stand in the Spirit and declare the Word of God every day. Get up and quote that Scripture. Memorize the Word. Declare it over your children. Release the power of the Word of God. I call forth righteous seed in Jesus' name. I call forth blessing on righteous seed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, there's a move of the Holy Ghost in this place right now. There is a move of the Holy Ghost in this place. God is stirring up families because the family mountain is precious to the Lord. It's the mountain that God God established all the mountains. He rules. All the mountain of the Lord covers all of them. But the family mountain is so precious to the Lord. The first institution was the institution of marriage. Come on, begin to just pray in the Spirit for a minute. I just feel the Holy Spirit saying, contend here for a moment. Begin to pray in the Spirit. Come on. Pray in the Spirit. This is the time of the Lord. We've had enough junk. We've had enough church. We've had enough religion. This is the time of the Lord. Ye 
If you're struggling in your marriage, I've got two words for you. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, respect your husbands. Take it to the cross. Take it to the cross. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, pray this prayer with me. This is where we're starting. And then I'm telling you, Holy Ghost is about to unleash on this place. You need to get ready. You need to get ready. Put your religion aside. Put your preconceived ideas aside. This is the time of the Lord. He's bursting some of you out of your box. You've been in this nice, neat little box and it's all been contained and you felt real comfortable and you felt real, you know, good because it's right here in the box. But God's busting that box apart. He is exploding dunamis power in that box.